thank you very much for your enthusiastic applause so late in the day. Basically, I want to talk about challenging the status quo. And although it sounds very technical, leveraging data and technology is not going to be technical. So I'm just making this cues up front. What do you really mean uh, by data? What is data? I mean, if you go back, if you, if you go into a really traditional explanation, we would say facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. So boring. I, I asked this question to Generative AI. It told me data is a collection of information that can be analyzed. So simple. Right? So everything is data. My height, my weight, my shoe size, everything is data. What is this economic scenario of Nepal? What do you say? Last year we had 7.74% of inflation and we just had 2.16% of economic growth. Right? What does that mean? What does this data mean? It means we're in a stage of stagflation. They wouldn't tell us this, but it's there. The data is showing that. Because we didn't have, we had a very high rate of inflation and the demand was stagnant. The un unemployment rate is already being highlighted. I'll not go into that. Nepal ma biosai garna garo. So it's difficult to work in Nepal. It's difficult to do your own work in Nepal. It's difficult to be an entrepreneur in Nepal. That's what we say. Is there any data to back it up? There was a survey done in 2019. It's already been five years. I'm really hoping the next time the survey comes up, we are in a better position. Because this is really concerning. People who say, I want to pay taxes. It's difficult to pay taxes. That's what the country runs on. That's what the policy makers run on. Still, it's difficult to pay taxes. 175 out of 190 countries. Electricity. We have surplus electricity to export to countries like India. But getting electricity for starting your own business is difficult. We are ranked 135 out of 190. Starting a business. We talk about the startup ecosystem. I myself have been working with an incubation center. We have been trying to foster incubation and innovation. We have tried to foster entrepreneurship in, in the city that I live in, the city that gave me so much. But still, these kind of figures are worrying. But are we really catching the real data? Do we actually have the data to really say by what percentage it has improved, by what percentage it has gone down? But there are also opportunities in getting the data. Play to your strengths. If you want to do something, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to start a, if you want to be a startup, if you are a startup. But what do you mean by play to strength? How do you show your strength? Not by having a can of spinach, but by quantifying your strengths. I really love Nepalis coffee. I'm I'm, I'm a big fan of Nepalis coffee and coffee. Nepali coffee is organic and good. Yeah, I used to say the same thing. But how do I convey that to other people? How do I convey the taste that I have? How do we convey to the world that Nepali coffee is good? How do we do that? By saying we have a good coffee score. Lekali coffee, I think it was in Kavri Balanchok in 2018, uh, they were rated at 90. Uh, they have this rating where 80 to 100 is considered good. 90 is excellent. But we do not have that kind of critical data, critical mass of data to really say, okay, this is the average for Nepali coffee. Organic, we say it's organic. But what percent is of organic? It can be 100% organic. It can be like somewhat organic, 95 to 100%. And 70% is it has some components that are organic. Just quantifying it. So it's easy for everyone to understand. Get into the standards. USD organic, U organic. So I think that's what I mean by leveraging the data.
That's what I mean by you know, saying that let's leverage the data that we have and let's create data and leverage that. Because being certified doesn't mean just a certificate. There are so many things that goes into getting a certificate. I worked on ISO 9001 system, ISO 14001 system, FSC 22000 systems. That certificate requires hours and hours of hard work, hours and hours of record keeping. Because the auditors are there only for a day or two. How do you prove to them that your system is flawless, that, you're, that you are doing what you are saying that you are doing, but presenting the data? Same about weaknesses. I don't know how to read. What do you mean by you don't know how to read? What can't you read? Is it a nursery rhyme that you can't read? Or is it some very complex formulas that you cannot read? So we need to quantify it in some way. For me, I think for coffee beans, since I've only taken the, the example in the strain, I'll also take the same example for the weaknesses that we have as a coffee producer. We produced 355 metric tons in 2022. We are 63rd out of 82 countries for which the data was available. But look at our yield, how much we are producing per hectare. We are 77th out of 79. China is the most efficient. India is almost seven times, more than seven times our yield. Liberia, which grows coffee on fewer hectares than Nepal, is actually more than double. And also, like I said earlier, not enough copying store score data available for us to say, okay, this is the average for our Nepali coffee. That's our strength. And when we cannot convey our strength, that becomes our weakness. That's what I mean by leveraging the data to, to challenge the status quo, to get out of this rut. Opportunities are there. There are opportunities, believe me. We have been saying nothing can be done in this country. Even the people, who, the policymakers were supposed to tell us that there is something that can be done in this country are saying nothing can be done because they are not looking into the data. This is the import of rice into Nepal, most of it from India. Baswati rice worth 2.75 or but that's like 2.75 billion rupees. 41.6, 41,610 metric tons. Other rice, 5.05 lakhs metric tons of rice. Why are we importing so much rice? If you look at the Basmati rice, when you look into the import rates, it's 73.7 rupees per kg which is lower than what you get in India from where the rice is coming. How can it happen? There must be something missing. Are we so, so inefficient that even the transportations and everything are eating up almost 30% of the margins? Or is it the government that is supporting their farmers in India, providing subsidies, providing benefits? Who is it harming? And look at the import duties. If someone wants to import rice into India today, he has to pay 77.77% of duties. If someone wants to import Basmati rice in Bangladesh, he has to pay 85% import duties. For other rices, it's 25.5. For Nepal, no matter if it's paddy or Basmati rice or other rice, if it's from South Asian country, it is 11.5%. If it's from other countries, it's 12.5%. So why would anyone grow rice here, grow paddy here? Why would anyone process rice here? It's not economically viable. We should also analyze what the data tells us. This 85% Bangladesh did not come up with 85% in a dream. They must have a system in place to say, okay, 85% is the right percentage to levy on a basmati rice. Why can't we do that? Because we do not 
take enough data into consideration. My proposed solution to the policymakers is increase taxes on rice, but decrease on paddy. Because you bring in the paddy, you process it in Nepal, you add value. How is the value added, added? by the people who work in the rice factories, by the electricity that the factories will consume? That's how the value will be added. And there's a very interesting fact. If you look into per capita consumption of rice and potato, Nepal is the only country that is in the top 15 of both lists. That means we are consuming a disproportionate amount of carbohydrates from rice and potatoes. It's very, very high. So I think that also has a health implications for us. Threats. I... I'm very, I have a long list, but I don't want to talk about it today. I want to talk about opportunities today. You'll analyze the threats. You'll get to know the threats when you want to do something. Threats will always be there. But I'll not talk about it today. I'll leave it up on you to analyze it because it will be diverse. It will be a lot and that's, it is going to be negative and let's leave it for some other day for some other discussions for today. Let's be positive, let's be upbeat. Technology. I'm an engineer by qualification, but for me technology is simple things. Simple things that matter to me because 90% of the time, the simple technological innovations, that simple technological tools that help us out. When we talk about technology, we usually think of computers, mobiles, communication technologies, satellites. But how about this much simpler technology? They are ground breaking for the time. I think the wheels, the hammers, the screwdrivers, they have contributed more to the well being of the humans than any other technology after that. Crisis brings opportunities. It does. Look into the advent of ride sharing, food delivery in, in Nepal. Indian blockhead. A few guys got together and said, let's do some ride sharing as a, as a humanitarian effort. Let's do it. They started it. Many people joined the wagon. Yet even after the blockhead was lifted, People had enough critical data, enough critical mass to say that, okay, it justifies a business. That's how ride sharing happened in Nepal. That's how ride sharing happened in Kathmandu. Right? So that's what I mean by leveraging the data. Data is not just something that you have to analyze in supercomputers, billions of numbers. You don't need that. If you want to open a cafe, look into the radius of one kilometers in your locality. Get the data, how many coffee drinkers are there, how many people want to spend their time in a cafe. That's data. Let's make it simple. Let's keep it simple. And another thing about technology is, please don't throw whatever you have into the same basket. Don't overwhelm your users. As a startup, that's the last thing that you want to do. Focus on your core strength and use data for that. Look into what part of your offerings are doing the best. Concentrate on that. And the most important thing, when I talk about, I, when I talk about any, any budding entrepreneurs that I want to tell to any startup that wants to start is, will your product or your service improve your customer's experience? It might do wonderful stuff. It might be the most advanced thing that we have ever seen. But if it doesn't improve your customer's experience, if it doesn't add value to their life, it's worthless. So how do you determine that? You know the review scores that you get five stars, three stars, two stars, that's data. How many five stars has a product got? That's data. And 
one last suggestion might not be so relevant to the topic I introduced first, but I really think that a lot of us, when you want to get into the entrepreneurial ecosystem, when you want to be a startup, we talk about the lack of resources, but we overlook the angels around us. We talk about angel investors, venture capitalists, investors, private capital. But have you talked to your mom? Have you talked to your dad? Did you pitch your idea to your friends or your colleagues at your work? Those people know you inside out. Then if your near and dear ones do not want to invest on your idea, work on it again. Your idea is not mature enough to be invested on. Thank you.